We are going to go over three things that you can do to make your fishing videos look better and we're going to get started right now. What's up everybody? You are watching Angling Anarchy. My name is Brian and in today's video we are going to go over three different things that you can do to make your fishing videos better. These are three mistakes that I see people make quite often and I've made in the past myself. In fact, the, the only reason I thought about making this is I was thinking, what are some things that I, you know, early on when I was making videos that, that I did that don't make a video so pleasing to watch. And so I, I'm as guilty of it as anybody. Through the years of doing more filming and making more videos, and trying to educate myself on how to make my videos better, I've come up with these three things that everybody needs to watch out for, especially when you're making a fishing video. First thing, audio. I can't stress how much audio affects a video. You can have the best video in the world, and if your audio is sub poor, people are not going to want to watch it. People just don't realize the difference that audio can make in a video. Now, for instance, when we're out fishing, the biggest problem with a lot of fishing videos that I see are they are, for lack of a better term, windblown. The noise of the wind, kind of that that you hear on a lot of videos, that's just the wind going over a microphone and there's, there's nothing there to protect it. Uh, a lot of microphones you see will have something like this over it, you know, something fuzzy. It's actually called a dead cat for good reason. What this does is it cuts down on the wind noise, and it's it's very important to have something like that over your microphones to cut down on that wind noise and make the speaking and everything else a little bit more crisp. So right now I'm I'm filming on my big camera. I've got the Rode Video Micro on here. It's a, it's about a sixty dollar mic, and it's a fantastic mic. You see a lot of people using it, and it has the big dead cat over it, uh, of course. So that's the bulk of this video we're going to be using that microphone. I'm going to do a couple of tests with a couple of different GoPros to show you what that audio sounds like so you can get an idea of of what we're dealing with here. Typically when I'm filming fishing I always have a chest cam on and I've talked about this before in fact I'll leave a, a link for a video up top here uh, and in the description below uh, about why I use a chest cam but one of the big reasons is and I've got it on right now just in case this mic up here decides not to work, I can use the audio from this one. Um, yep, it's recording. I don't even have the lens cover off because all I'm worried about is capturing the audio. The reason you see a lot of people wearing a chest cam is it's picking up your audio right here. Now you could wear a separate uh, voice recorder with a little lavalier mic or something like that, but I, I like having the video and the audio all together. It helps me in the editing process, so when I'm trying to put two maybe two angles together. I can kind of watch what's going from the chest cam and the, and the, the other camera that I'm trying to kind of sync up so everything uh, looks nice and, and synced. But that's the reason a lot of people wear this chest cam. You're capturing your audio right here. And a lot of the times when you're fishing, you've got your back to the wind. So you've got one more layer of protection against the wind hitting that mic. And it's right here and it's nice protected and you get really good sound. Here's an example of a shot that I'm using the audio from the chest cam and just the video from the, the camera that's up in the pole in the boat. And I'll actually play the audio from the video of the pole to, so you can see what it sounds like. Fish. Nice fish. Ready? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 no, no, no. So that's the difference it can make. It goes from something that you can't tell what in the hell's going on all you can hear is that rumble of the wind going across the 
microphone and the other is nice clear you can hear what's going on or at least hear what I'm saying in the boat. So going back to that wind deadening dead cat idea for a GoPro you can buy little stickers that have a little bit of the fluff on top of it that you put over the microphone on your GoPro. What I do is I've got, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, these are the aluminum housings that I use for my GoPros and you can see this little tuft of stuff up top here. I just glued a piece of the dead cat that I cut out in place so it's right over top of the microphone. Um, this dead cat I was showing before is actually one that I, it's a sacrificial one that I've cut pieces out of uh, and then you don't need two inches worth of fluff, you can cut that down. But that makes a huge difference, cuts down on almost all of the wind noise that you get off of your GoPros and makes it a lot more enjoyable to watch a video. Let's real quick take a look at some of the sources of audio. As I said, I'm filming this on my bigger camera with a Rode video mic and I'm hoping the audio sounds good. So that's what you're hearing right now. Let's switch over and listen to the audio uh, from the chest cam so that I'm recording that right now. So here I've got one of the Hero 4 Silvers, which I absolutely love as my audio GoPro. That's what I wear as a chesty. But these old cases for the Hero 4 Silvers and Hero 3s, the audio you get out of these are not good. Um, it's, it's inside of a case. It's waterproof. There's not a real good way for the audio. You can hear it, but this is what it sounds like. It just doesn't sound as nice as the audio coming from these two sources. In review for audio, Make sure you have some sort of wind dampening device, a dead cat over the microphone. It's going to help out tremendously since we're obviously filming fishing and we're outside all the time. A chest cam really captures excellent audio. Um, if you don't like them because of the, the way they kind of catch your hands uh, when you're filming, you know, make sure I've got mine tilted back towards me a little bit more instead of down. Uh, that keeps it from recording your hands uh, in the reel all the time. Plus I have one that sits up on my chest a little bit higher so that helps get uh, a little bit of a better angle. And the Hero 4 Silver is my favorite. I think it has some of the best audio without having to connect a microphone. I didn't really go over that. I don't like connecting microphones to the GoPros. I've had nothing but bad luck, uh, a lot of clicks and pops, and I just don't get real good audio. If you can pull it off, absolutely do it because you're going to get better audio with an external mic on, on a lot of GoPros, especially the newer ones. So that's always an option too. But that's number one, audio people. It is so incredibly important. Number two, I see a lot of people filming with just one camera and that's fine. I don't want to uh, make anybody think that they have to have, go out and buy seven, eight GoPros like what I'm dealing with. Uh, in fact, I have a video about that, about dealing with multiple cameras in the boat. Put a link for it whoop, up here. You can watch that later. Having more than one angle is sort of important, I think, because it gets boring just watching the same thing over and over again. And that means just maybe having two cameras. So you can have your GoPro, and if you don't want to buy another GoPro, use your phone. Your phone uh, as long as you've got a newer Samsung or Apple phone, your phone takes excellent video. So make use of it. You can buy these little contraptions that hold it in place. I've got this one on a little tripod. You can buy a cheap tripod like the one I'm using for the big camera. And you know this, this little thing is just on a quarter 20 screw. You can screw it right into a tripod. So whether you're in a boat or you're filming from shore and you've got a head cam or a chest cam, Use something else like your phone to get an extra shot so you can kind of cut back and forth. People's attention span are so, so short these days that if they watch something static for more than 10 seconds, they just they lose interest. So if you can kind of keep cutting back and forth between two cameras even, it makes your video seem a lot more dynamic, like something's going on even when something may not be, and it helps out a lot. To that point, I see a lot of videos where maybe it's a four minute video and the first three minutes of it is somebody standing in a boat casting, making multiple casts. I, it's not very interesting, I don't think. I try to, in, in most of my videos, the longest amount of time you'll see 
is from the moment I make the cast to when the fish hits. Anything before that I'm not worried about unless something funny happening or you're doing a maybe like a, a fast motion montage of you working a shoreline or something like that. Otherwise, leave it to, you know, maybe start the clip where, boom, you make the cast, you're reeling it in, and whether the fish hits out or next to the boat, um, you know, maybe in that time where you make the cast and you're reeling it in, you can do a couple of those cuts to keep people's attention, but don't just have a static shot for more than 15, 20 seconds, and even that probably just seems like a lifetime. Again, you can get these GoPros refurbished, uh, the Hero 4 Silvers, for 150 bucks. They're not that expensive. If you've already got a phone, boom, you're already up to two cameras. So make use of them, and it will make your video so much more interesting. On to number three, slow motion. If you've done any filming for any amount of time, you probably have some cool shots where a fish is jumping out of the water right next to the boat, and maybe you've got a camera on the gunnel that, that captured that and you think to yourself, oh, that's gonna look awesome in slow motion. Now, I think this is where the problem starts, is guys take a camera, they put it on the boat, they get a cool shot, and they're like, that's gonna be awesome in slow-mo, but they have failed to take into account one very important thing. And that very important thing is your frames per second, the FPS on whatever camera you're using. Now, most cameras come set to 24, 24, which is actually 23.97. There's weird idiosyncrasies to why they're not a whole number. You can look it up on YouTube. I won't go over it right now. But 23.97 or 24 is what most movies are filmed in. It's sort of a cinematic look, if you will. 29.98 or 30 frames per second is what a lot of you know, TV shows are filmed in. 60 frames per second or 59.94 if you want to be technical about it is what a lot of sports are filmed in so they can slow it down now that's the important part so you can slow it down if you take a camera that's it uh, filming at 24 or 30 frames per second and you get that cool shot and you think oh i gotta slow this down it's gonna look cool it's not and for one good reason in the editing software you have a certain number of frames that you can put into it and it will export to make your video. It's typically 24 or 30. You can set up your timeline when you edit two different ways. Or you could probably set it up more than that, but those are the two most common, 24 and 30 frames per second. So if you have a 60 frame per second piece of footage that you want to put into that timeline, and it's at 30, say, it's going to kick out every other one so that that 60 frames is down to 30, that's all it can handle, and then you're fine. Now, if you take a 30 frame per second and try to put it into, you know, one fourth or let's say one fifth, just so we have even numbers here, slow motion. Now you're taking 30 frames per second and one fifth of that is six. So over that one second, you have six frames and it's going to look choppy and crappy and not good at all. The only way you can remedy this is to have a camera that can film in 60 or 120 or 240 frames per second. Now you don't want to get too crazy. If you start going too high on your frame rate, the shutter speed for the camera gets really fast and you start to lose a little bit of light. Uh, so in low light conditions it can be a detriment, but I find filming at 60 or 120, you can very easily take that 120 or 240 frames per second and say, for, for instance, 120. Five times slow-mo would be 24 frames, which is perfect because it gives you that nice cinematic look. 240, you can slow it down 10 times to get that same 24 frames per second. But that's what you have to look at. I think a lot of people get that cool shot, they get it in their head, I have to slow this down, and regardless of what it looks like after they slow it down, they go, eh, it looks cool in slow-mo. It doesn't. It just doesn't. You have to have the amount of frames to make it look good. For instance, in the video from last week, I had this really cool piece of footage where Jim hooks a little musky boat side and the fish kind of freaks out and almost ends up jumping in the boat. It actually bounces off the side of the boat and it's a really neat piece of footage. Here's what it looks like at its original 60 frames per second real time. So in the video, I slowed it down two and a half times. That two and a half times slow-mo gives me 24 frames per second. So here's what that looked like. It still looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth. Nothing wrong with it. 
Now, if we go to four times slow-mo, it's still passable, but it's not nearly as good. And then here's five times. which now it's really starting to degrade in quality a little bit. And if we try to go to 10 times slow-mo, here's what that looks like. So it's very, very important that if you're going to slow something down, you need to be filming at a higher frame rate. That's going to give you that nice, smooth, slow motion that doesn't look all choppy. So don't force slow-mo on shots that can't be slowed down. I know you've probably got some cool stuff that you think would look cool, but it's not. It's just not. So don't do it, please. <laughs> I know I said we were just going to do three, but I thought of one last one uh, that it gets pretty technical, and I do a very basic job at this. I am by no means a, an expert at, at any of this really, but I just, these are some recommendations that I have for you guys. The last one is take a look at your footage and if it looks a little bit dull, you can uh, color grade it. And what that means is you can go into your video editor and you should be able to change the exposure, the hue, the brightness, uh, there's there's a couple different parameters that you can change, uh, vibrancy, saturation, that sort of thing, and you can sort of pep up the way the video looks, uh, make the colors pop a little bit. If the video is a little bit dull or underexposed, you can add a little bit of light to it, and it really helps out. It makes the videos look so much better. Uh, again, any of the stuff I talked about, the only reason I learned it is because A, I made those mistakes in the beginning and probably still do sometimes. You, there's just some things you miss every now and again. I watch a ton of YouTube videos and they're not all necessarily fishing. I watch a lot of YouTube videos about how to make better YouTube videos. Uh, some of the ones that I can recommend are Nick Nimmin, Roberto Blake, Catherine Manning, uh, Brian G. Johnson, they all have really cool videos about how to improve your filming. Uh, and for that matter, if you really want to get technical with the filming side of things, Peter McKinnon and Potato Jet are two really good channels that you can check out. They'll explain frame rate way better than I did, I'm sure. They'll explain color grading way better than I did. Uh, but that's my recommendation is to check out some of these other channels and see what they're doing to improve your videos. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope this helps out a little bit. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will leave links to some of the, the other YouTube channels I talked about uh, in the description below here so you can check that out. If you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate it oh so much and thank you for watching. I can't wait to get back out on the water and actually film some fishing for you guys. Take care. We'll see you on the next video.